UFC featherweight Stephen Ocho Peterson joins me again. This time, uh, not under the, the best of circumstances. Uh, Ocho, you had to pull from uh, your fight scheduled later this month on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, you know, it seems to, to be kind of a, a rough start to the year, um, all things considered, uh, just in my life. But uh, it's just uh, one of those things where you got to take it for what it is. And you got to let it let it burn for a little bit and then, uh, you know, uh, use it as motivation moving forward. Now, I, I know you wanted to, to wait before you made a public statement until after this past UFC event. You had a few teammates on that card. We'll dive into that in a little bit. But first and foremost, just tell us a little bit about the injury, how it happened and how long you intend to be uh, on the shelf. Yeah, so uh, it's kind of kind of one of those things that's uh, an issue. Uh, it's been an issue and, uh, you know, blocking punches is very strenuous on your, on your joints and stuff and, uh, kicks even worse. And I don't know when it actually happened, but I know it's been getting a lot worse lately. And, uh, you know, I would just lose use of my arm. Uh, it, it would just go numb. And then for days it'd be like locked up and I couldn't extend it. I'd be like, ah, you know, like, um, can't throw a punch and definitely can't get hit in it and, you know, cause more damage, more inflammation. So, uh, uh, through, throughout my c career, the last few years, it's just been getting worse. And, uh, this time it happened in the first, basically first sparring of my camp. I went out there to do rounds and my elbow locks up and it's like, oh shoot, you know, normally if it happened halfway, you know, I've already done most of my camp. It's like, okay, we'll just, you know, get the inflammation down and I'll be able to to use my my arm and uh, this time it happened at the beginning so it's like there is no camp there is no training for the fight like, and uh at this point in my career i just felt um i got so many eyes on me i go out there and i lose use of my arm it's like i just look like shit and i, I it's happened before and <laughs> it's like uh this guy can't strike <laughs> it's like yo i'm trying you know i'm trying <laughs> trying my hardest but uh it just won't do what I tell it. It's stuck, you know? So, uh, yeah, we got to uh, go get it scoped out, get it uh, cleaned out. There's some, some things in there. Got to, you know, get, get it fixed. And uh, it's relatively minor surgery, so recovery time should be pretty short. And hopefully this, uh, this won't be an issue going forward. Well, well, that's good to hear. So, so minor surgery. Um, how is there going to be an extensive rehab that you're going to have to do? How long will that timetable be? Um, honestly, I'm thinking midsummer, but uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see because you know once they get in there, who knows? I mean, they're literally in holes in your arm. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's a lot of things that can go right. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to, you know, predict that, but we're going to hope for the best and hope the surgery goes well, um, everything's smooth, and uh, get back into the gym within a month. Do you have a date now for the surgery? Is that set? Yeah, it'll be this Friday, Friday 14th. So uh, try and get in there as soon as possible. You know, there's a little delay with, you know, getting it on the schedule, getting it approved, but, you know, we're good to go and, uh, and ready to get this thing taken care of. Now, how has this been, I guess it's been nagging for a while now, right? You said you don't know exactly when it happened, but how has it been preventing you from being able to full out spar and train during camp? And has this been happening your your past couple of camps? Has it been going on that long? Uh, yeah, uh, years, years and years. And uh, it's uh, one of those things where um, coach is screaming at me, put my hands up and I'm like, I'm trying. I'm, it's, it's stuck and I got to snap it. I got to snap snap and uh, uh, get it to loosen up and then which in doing so causes all kinds of more ligament damage and uh, swelling um, and then the more swelling you got the tighter the arm gets um, and then just sleeping uh, is, is miserable um, when when your arms just throbbing all night mm -hmm. I think I wake up in the morning do it do another session and, uh, I don't like taking training sessions off when I'm training for a camp so if I got something like that, it's like, you know, we're just pushing through, which ends up making it worse. And, you know, then the, the last week and a half, two weeks is all recovery from all the damage I've done to my body over camp. And, uh, 
this has been a main source of the damage that I've done to my body. So it's something that needs to uh, be taken care of. And I, I think it'll make a huge difference, um, not only in my training camp, but in my fights. Um, uh, I, I look at old fights and I can see when, when it's bothering me. It's like, oh, I'm getting punched in the face a lot right there. I wonder why, but I'm not going to like, you know, go out there and be like, make an excuse. Oh, this is why I'm getting punched in the face. You know, I got to, you know, figure it out. I'm in the fight. So, uh, you know, rather than uh, have a piss poor performance on the 29th and uh, not be able to box at all, and, you know, just having to keep an excuse within, you know, just not to be that guy, uh, I'm going to get it taken care of. So I don't need to uh, hide an excuse. Gotcha. Now, this injury, this nagging injury, has it caused you to adjust your game plan in previous fights? Because I got to imagine if it's making that much of an impact on how you can straighten out your arm, block punches and whatnot, it, it must have really made you, you know, change how you're going to go in and fight certain fighters. Uh, yeah, most of the time it's on the fly. Uh, watch my last fight. That's how I, I dealt with it. I was like a wounded animal. I couldn't... <laughs> couldn't throw my jab anymore and uh, uh freaking spun <laughs> it's like but it, it causes me to do things that i wouldn't normally do which sometimes can end up really good sometimes it could be a bad shot for a takedown you know like oh i can't strike so i'm gonna try and throw a takedown from way out here and <laughs> that that ends up bad so um you know uh elbow issues cause boxing issues and you know if i can get that right and you know be able to showcase my my stand-up skills um it, it'll uh it'll show what i'm really capable of now if i'm not mistaken this is the first fight you've ever had to, to pull out from uh what's your frustration level like i got to imagine it's it's uncharted territory for you at this point i feel like i'm turning down money <laughs> i'm like I'm like man uh i fought a lot of guys that with you know much more experience for much lesser money like much, much lesser money. So um, that's what it feels like. It feels like um, I'm letting down my fans. Um, obviously, I know the people that are really my fans. Um, they they they're cool with it. They're gonna you know look forward to my next fight and uh, and all that. But uh, you know, just the MMA fans out there. I'm an entertainer. I like to go out there and entertain. I like to go out there, put on a great fight. I'm a warrior. And right now, it's like I gotta sit here and lick my wounds. Mm. Now, after the uh, the spinning back fist KO, your popularity is at an all time high right now. Is is this fight or this potential fight that you had? Maybe it happens in the future with Cruz. Was that a step up in competition? Was that the toughest fight that you feel like you could have had so far in the UFC? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> uh, just uh, off the top of my head, Leandro Higos, the the one I always go back to. He was like sixteen and one when I fought him. I'm not gonna say exactly what I made in that fight, but uh, it's a fraction, like a fraction of what I get paid now in the UFC. So, um, saying that, you know, you know, this guy, Cruz, he could be a beast, who knows, but uh, I've, I've fought much more experienced opponents, much more proven opponents um, for much lesser money. So, uh, honestly, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, get better and get a short notice fight this summer or, you know, get booked with uh, a name Cub Swanson or somebody with uh, you know some some more celebrity um, that I can you know build my name off of. So if if I'm reading you correctly, if this is kind of a regression in uh, who you fought previously in the UFC, why do you feel like the UFC wanted to match you with Cruz? Is this something where they felt maybe it could uh, heighten your popularity even more, go and get another early finish? Or is this just one of those things where, you know, they, they matched you, they wanted to see what this kid has and, and let the cards fall where they may? Yeah, you never know what the matchmaker's actually thinking when he makes a, a matchup like this. But, but Cruz got a, a really nice... Um, flying knee knockout and uh i've eaten a couple of knees so maybe they wanted to see hey, hey could this guy could this guy he could eat the knee and maybe he'll you know do something with it uh maybe they thought they were you know throwing me a bone something to build my name off of or <clears throat> really could be could be endless possibilities of uh, what they were thinking but um as far as like career-wise moving myself forward 
um, I think fighting somebody with a, a name would make sense because, um, you know, I've, I've already fought so many fights. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm, I, I'm like the cowboy. I, I fight. I'm, I got 20 something fights before I got to the UFC. So, you know, now I'm, I'm here, I, I'll fight anybody and they know that. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I just want, you know, a big name so I can continue. You know, I beat a big name and then, that you know, I'm moving forward in my career, uh, moving towards the top 10. Fighting a UFC newcomer might, might not have, you know, been the best guy to go take out to, to progress my career. It'd be another win, you know, two, three wins in a row would be nice. But um, that's all hearsay now. We, we don't gotcha. know what would have happened or, uh, you know, I got to. I got to get this taken care of. And if they want to rebook that fight, I'm game. Um, if they want to give me a different opponent, I'm, I'm game. I'm, I'm game for whatever they say. They're, they're the boss. And, uh, you know, I always step up to the plate barring this, this one, uh, one mishap. Right. Well, it sounds like you're not really invested on fighting crews in particular. Like you could kind of take it or leave it. So you'd prefer if maybe they give you a, a more popular name when they do rebook you. Well, I mean, uh, Typically, you'd want to you want to be a fired up, right? <laughs> I was fired up to fight. Don't get me wrong. I was fired up to fight on ESPN eight, uh, the Ocho. Uh, <laughs> I was digging all that, you know, just playing with it. But uh, yeah, um, I was fired up to fight, and then this happened, and it was it was a hard thing to accept. I had to go back and forth with my coach. <laughs> it was like he's like, no, well, you know, I, I'm the boss, <laughs> the coach. I've never never backed out. <laughs> Come on, don't make me do this. Don't make me. But, uh, you know, I thought it through. And uh, just making a, you know, a, a smart decision here to to take care of this injury um, so I don't go out there and, you know, lay a goose egg. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you're, so you're thinking June or July is when your fans can expect to see you rebooked back fighting in the octagon. Definitely, yeah. Um, as, long, as long as all goes as planned, um, I expect to be in there midsummer. Uh, I don't like sitting on the shelf. I like to be busy, and I like making money. So uh, I want to get back in there and get paid and, and advance my career forward. Nice. Now, uh, I, I know you uh, a lot of respect for your teammates, and you said you wanted to wait until after UFC 247 was in the books before you really dove into this, made a public announcement, told everyone what was going on. Uh, it was a rough night for Fortis MMA. How's everyone? How's the morale around the gym? Uh, we're just all like, you know, there for each other. You know, we're like a family, and it's it's rough to see anybody fall on the team. Uh, you know, and uh, it, it was a rough night, and all we can do is move forward, um, just keep training harder, and uh, you know, train smarter. You know, see, we we got to see what they did, how we got beat. There's there's a lot of eyes on us, and when everybody's watching, everybody's trying to. To pick you apart, you gotta, you know, change things up, or you gotta adapt. And uh, I think that's what we're we're doing. This, uh, you know, we're we're not we're not you know getting in fights in the gym now. We're not all pissed off and and all that. And you know, it, it a loss hurts, and uh, we all feel it. And we all just need to make the most out of it. There's uh, there, there's got to be some silver lining in there. There's a reason it happened, and that that reason is so that we can adapt and overcome. I'm not asking you to single out one uh, teammate in particular, but was there one performance that you were the most surprised about? I could tell you my personal opinion. Um, I didn't see Miles Johns uh, losing. I, I really felt like uh, he was going to go in there and get the job done. I actually had some money bet on him on, on DraftKings, so I was, I was pretty bummed out just for my own selfish reasons. Um, is, is there one in particular where you just thought, like, maybe they didn't perform their best? Um, really, all, all the fights, it was just uh... – when you get in there, it's a fight, man, and uh, all the lights are on you. Everybody's watching. It's a big moment. Uh, I'm not making excuses for any of the guys, but you know anything can happen in there. So, uh, you know, all of them surprised me. I thought, you know, I thought we were going three and zero, uh, and you know, it was like, it was like a bad dream. But you know, um, once it's done, you can't go back, and all you can do is uh, look at how you ended up there and, uh, and work on getting better in those areas.
Yeah, well, but well said. Uh, you guys are have a great gym. I mean, Fortis MMA, that's that's one of the best ones around. So uh, no doubt you guys will all bounce back. Uh, I, I can't wait to see everyone step back in the cage, get in the wind column. I do got to ask you, how did you score that main event, John Jones and Reyes? There's a lot of controversy there. I had it 3-2 to two Reyes. If not, I thought the fourth round was close, too. So when I heard the the 40, 46, the, I, I mean, the... The ones that had four rounds to, to one, I was like, okay, it's going to be Reyes for sure. And then now John Jones. I was shocked. I was literally shocked. Um, Reyes took the fight to over the first three rounds for sure. Um, I, I, I mean, I understand you got to beat the champ, but I thought he decisively beat him. And what do you expect in the fourth and fifth when you, you're going on hard on the gas for the first three rounds? That's the, you know, that's what you expect. You expect them to, to, you know, start losing a little bit of energy. No matter what shape you're in, you're going balls to the wall for four or five rounds. You're going to be tired. That's why people have different game plans to move around and whatnot. And uh, Jones played a good game plan, but I don't think he did enough in the third to take over. Um, I gave him the fourth and fifth round. But, hey, that's politics. That's uh, Texas judging for you. Um We've had our own conversations about Texas judging. I, uh, on my radio show, I had one of the, the judges that we agree with and ha have things in common. We had him on the show, and he basically um, laid out everything that he feels is corrupt with the, the Texas commission and, and, uh, and all of that. And uh, so something's got to change, not just in Texas, but the whole overall um, – MMA scoring system needs to be overhauled. Um, yeah. In freaking wrestling, right, you, you get a takedown, you get two points. In Taekwondo, you hit the guy, you get, I don't know, point for this, a kick, pull two points, whatever the scoring system. Why not use some sort of adaptation of that where you have, a, it's not a 10-9 must system. Um, I think the 10-9 must system is flawed from the get-go, and boxing showed it was flawed make it a scoring system to where every time you hit the guy, you get a point, and at the end, you get a score total, or you just score round, round winners, but I think it should be a total. Um, why, why score, you know, if you demolish the guy in rounds one and two, and then round three, like, it, it should be a to overall score of, uh, throughout the rounds. But, I wholeheartedly agree with you. That makes a thousand percent sense to me. Also, I feel like I think fighters should know how the rounds are scored moving forward. Like, I think MMA is the only sport where they don't know if they won or they lost a round. Max Holloway tweeted that. That needs to change. And I feel like the UFC is starting, and hopefully just mixed martial arts promotions in general, are starting to look at that and maybe make that change. Because it's really not fair if you don't know where you stand on the judge's scorecard, uh, whether, or no, whether or not you need to push for a finish come the final round or not. Yeah, definitely. There should be a scoreboard. Uh and whatever score you're displaying, 10-9 or, you know, 50 points to 30 points or whatever uh, system you go with, you should know where you're at. Just like in all those sports that got a table with the flip card that has how many how many points you got. It, it makes sense. Even during the round, you look up, you're like, all right, I'm ahead. Uh, <laughs> it's, it could be something that fighters are like, you know, out striking a guy for two minutes and they look up. They're like, I'm ahead. Okay, I can kind of, you know, pace myself a little bit. Um that would be really smart to put into play. I, I saw something about the Can Kansas Commission playing with that this weekend. So uh, I think that needs to happen. And uh, one thing that the, uh, the judge that I had on my show had said, um, if these changes are going to happen, it needs to start at the top. The UFC is the only person with the, the only company with the power to, to change those things. Yeah. The, they, they need to, you know, they have the, the finances. There should be an yeah. The boxing commission should not be overseeing mixed martial arts. It doesn't make sense. It's a totally different sport. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all these things need to make a change, but it's going to take money and it's going to take power. So, uh, you know, the fighters can talk about it. The fans can talk about it. Media can talk about it. But uh, they're going to be the ones to actually take charge because uh, the, the commissions, the, the state commissions, they hold all that power. They're not going to want to give it up. It's going to take a fight. It's going to take some litigation. And the UFC is the only one capable of making that happen. Very well said. And again, I uh, completely agree with you.
Hopefully some changes start to, to happen here in 2020. I do want to address one quick thing with you before uh, one last MMA related question I have for you before I let you go. So we talked a little bit about this before. You have a twin, all right, on, on the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not sure if he's a coach, if he's a player that's that's injured or what. But you said to me before that you've heard this. Do you know who this guy is? Yeah, he's a quattro. He's like incognito. They fly him out on a jet to the games. He looks <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to make an appearance. It's really I'll funny, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll just say it's me. I'll just be like, yeah, I, just, I'm, I, I figured out a way to be in two places at once. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just doing it. It's hysterical. Well, I, I, I mentioned it to you before. I had to address it here uh, during this interview because it really is funny. It's, yeah, maybe uh, somebody yeah. could drop his name in the comments or something, and uh, we'll get down to the bottom of this. <laughs> that would be that would be nice. I'd like to find out who it is. All right, so one more question for me, Ocho, before we uh, we finish up here for today. Uh, I know you said you mentioned Cub Swanson earlier a, as a name. Just give me a couple of guys that you feel like make the most sense for you at 145 in your next fight. Is there someone you're zeroed in on, or it, does it really matter? I mean, you, you want to fight someone that's higher in the rankings, but I'm just curious if you feel like stylistically there's one or two guys that really stand out that you're hoping the UFC matches you with. Cub Swanson or Cron Gracie. I mean, those are two big names. Um, Cron doesn't have a whole lot of experience in the sport, but uh, he showed he's, he's game. You know, he's, he's on that level. So uh, he's been fighting his whole life. He just doesn't have the record. So uh, that would be a great fight. And then Cub Swanson, um, I feel like I match up really well against Cub. I've been watching him since I was a kid. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the young lion needs to, to feed on the old lion this sport so uh you know just, just step up <laughs> hey i like that cub is one of my favorite fighters to watch as well uh he always brings it fan friendly yeah. style uh doesn't back down from anyone that that would be an interesting fight as far as uh gracie goes how do you feel like you match up with him stylistically obviously he's known for his jiu-jitsu if it goes to the ground i got to imagine you know you're going to be scrambling maybe wanting to get to the feet maybe i'm wrong but do you feel like you just hold a significant advantage on the feet with him that's where you want to keep it yeah, I definitely hold a significant advantage on the feet. He would want to take me down from the get-go. Uh, but uh, I've never been submitted. So, you know, <laughs> I'd have to, you know, oh, man, I won't get submitted. Yeah, uh, You know, you would have to put me unconscious. You'd have to mangle me. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to tap out in there. So, uh, yeah, that'd be a great, great fight. And, uh, yeah, it'd be, fan, <laughs> it'd be fan-friendly, that's for sure. No so, doubt about it. Awesome. Well, listen, always appreciate the time. Thank you for uh, for reaching out to me as far as uh, making this press release. Uh, sorry to see that this fight has been canceled, uh, but me and all the other fans and uh, media members out there are looking forward to seeing you step back in the cage. Hopefully it's June, not July, uh, and you're 100% ready to go. Uh, before I do let you go, anyone you'd like to thank or uh, anything you want to promote, the floor is yours. Yeah, I want to thank my, my fans, you know, for, for being there fight to fight. Sorry, I couldn't you know, come through this time, you know, I'll be back better and more entertaining than ever. So just look forward to that. I want to thank my sponsors, Hutch's Barbecue, Knuckle Up Tattoo, um, Fight Fit uh, Lifestyle, and Fortis MMA. Just thank Fortis MMA. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of the squad. You know, uh, we bleed together um, and we shine together. So we're, we're going to keep it going and we're going to get better and, uh, you know, look forward to watching Macy Chason, she'll she'll be fighting uh, this Saturday, so uh, that'll be a great scrap to look forward to. No doubt. Uh, one last thing, uh, that shirt you got on, I like that. I think I'm gonna need to buy one. Where where can I get it? Fightfitlifestyle.com. So this is my new uh, fan shirt, and we got the hats, we got all kinds of swag. So check it out, Fightfitlifestyle.com.